Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Those in church and those also on the live stream, you're most welcome. I, uh, we had a communication yesterday from the United States of America, and we're extending the width of the English language across the, uh, a lot across the pond to the other side. I was told by this gentleman that uh, he'd learnt two different words in English, hobnobs and jim jams. <laughs> I'm glad we're doing something for the English language. We come together today with the continuing story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. It's a very fascinating story. There's a lot we can uh, gain from it. And although we're still celebrating our country's victory over Denmark, um, we uh, admire their pluck and uh, skill in their game as well. A very close uh, fought game last night. I'm saying this Mass this morning for the intentions of the Strode family. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We sit for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. Judah went up to Joseph and said, May it please my Lord, let your servant have a word privately with my Lord. Do not be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord questioned his brother, my Lord questioned his servants, Have your father or brother, and we said to my Lord, We we have an old father and a younger brother born of his old age. His love, he loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me, down with you. You will not be admitted in my presence again. When he went back to your servant, my father was, we repeated to him what my Lord had said. So when our father said, go back and buy us a little food, he said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother is with us. He will go down, for we cannot be admitted to the man's presence unless our younger brother is with us. So your servant, our father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two children. When one left me, I said that he must have been torn to pieces, and I have not seen him to this day. If you take this one from me too, and any harm comes to him, you will send me down to Sheol with my white head bowed in misery. Then Joseph could not control his feelings in front of all his retainers and exclaimed, Let everyone leave me. No one, therefore, was present with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. But he wept so loudly that all the Egyptians heard, and the news reached Pharaoh's palace. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? His brothers could not answer him. They were so dismayed at the sight of him. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. 
When they had come closer to him, he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you have sold into Egypt. But now, do not grieve, do not reproach yourselves for having sold me here, since God sent me before you to preserve your lives. The word of the Lord. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. The Lord called down a famine on the land. He broke the staff that supported them. He had sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember, Remember the, the wonders, wonders the, the Lord, Lord has, has done. done. His feet were put in chains. His neck was bound with iron. Until what he said came to pass, and the Lord's word proved him true. Remember, Remember the, the wonders, wonders the Lord, Lord has done. done. Then the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free, making him master of his house and ruler of all he possessed. Remember, Remember the, the wonders, wonders the Lord, the Lord has, has done. done. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. As you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers and cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. Provide yourselves with no gold or silver, not even a few coppers in your purses, with no haversack for the journey or spare tunic or foot wear or a staff for the workman deserves his keep whatever town or village you go into ask for someone trustworthy and stay with him until you leave as you enter his house salute it and if the house deserves it let your peace descend upon it if it does not let your peace come back to you and if anyone does not welcome you or listen to what you have to say, as you walk out of the house or town, shake the dust from your feet. I tell you solemnly, on the day of judgment, it will not go as hard as with the land of Sodom and Gomorrah as with that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, we considered the effects of favoritism in the family as demonstrated in the brothers of Joseph selling him into slavery. Today, we hear from Genesis the continuation of that story. With the brothers moved on now, Joseph in Egypt and the brothers coming at the time of famine and still not recognizing their brother, the young Joseph, in his august position given him by Pharaoh. Joseph went along with their ignorance, telling them to bring their youngest brother to him to see their reaction. Today, they tell their painful dilemma to Joseph, and he can keep his true identity from them no more. In a moment of great emotion, he tells them, I am your brother. He forgives them, having sold him into slavery, and says, God sent me before you to preserve your lives. The message of God's love and mercy was preached in this Joseph story many centuries before Christ. But in Christ, the word became incarnate. The word became flesh. The witness of Joseph's life pointed forward to the life in the spirit that God wants all people to know. He trusted in God through all his sufferings and setbacks, unfair and reasonable, unreasonable, though they might have seemed to him at the time. He could easily have concluded that God had abandoned him or could have nursed a grievance against his brothers. But throughout all his experiences, he held on to his faith in God. We are very privileged 
because we have received what many holy men and women have longed for, including Joseph all that time ago, the gift of the Holy Spirit. In his power, we can live and forgive, just as Joseph lived and forgave. Joseph also gave wonderful witness to the gift of mercy. His mercy towards his brothers was a reflection of God's mercy towards us. Two striking hallmarks of a Christian faith is that we conquer through forgiveness. The grace to forgive and the grace to extend mercy towards those who have offended, hurt or wounded us. The ability to forgive and to let go of resentment is a kind of litmus test of the Christian faith. We learn that to forgive those who have sinned against us is to set a prisoner free and then to discover that that prisoner is you. God's grace is available to us so that we may leave the aroma and fragrance of Christ wherever we go. The perfume of Christ's mercy and Christ's forgiveness. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for that. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praise adds nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Edward the Confessor, St. Pius X, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you to our stewards, as usual, Fatmata, Finney and Elizabeth this morning. Good to see you in church and also to have so many people with us joining us on the live stream. Don't forget that this coming weekend we will be continuing our live stream of uh, 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday and um, we will be celebrating in each of our four different churches with those local communities, celebrating the ordination of two of our men to the diaconate on Friday at Arundel Cathedral. Um, there are no spaces at Arundel Cathedral because of the restrictions there, but it will be live streamed from Arundel Cathedral, so please tune in to that particular live stream um, as we can't go to it. Well, the clergy will be going to it but, um, because they are our parishioners, uh, but unfortunately their, their families and friends have filled the church up. Also, um, we will be celebrating in our other churches at St. Pius at 5.30 p.m. on Sunday, on Saturday, Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Here at 10 a.m. as usual, at St. Mary's 12 noon, that's a change of time, and also at St. Edward's change from the morning till 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and we will be having an open-air mass. So fingers are crossed, but brollies are at the ready. Um, but bring your own chair for that. If you wish to attend in person, do book up. Um, the places are going very fast. We're opening the halls in all our churches um, to allow for extra congregations, but you do need to book a place, and uh, do get in there if you haven't already booked. Life in the presbytery goes on. Um, Father Tony is a good man. Last evening, we, we changed our normal character of working up to about 10 o'clock, and we stopped at five to eight, and Father Tony had got out um, bags of crisps and bottles of beer. So we were in true football fashion, and we watched the whole match, and uh, a very exciting match it was, very close fought, it was a brilliant match. And so we now look forward to the, uh, the one on Sunday. But of course it's Wimbledon final day, men's final days as well, so we've got to squeeze in these masses and, um, and the sporting events as well. Uh, the Lord will provide, I'm sure. Anyway, I wish you a very pleasant rest of the day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.